May the Lord fill you with his peace. You know, I've been a deacon now for 32 years, and all that time, all the priests that come up here to read the gospel and preach, they always have something, they stay first, you know? Uh, some catchphrase that everybody knows it's them and stuff like that, like Father Patrick, you know, God is good all the time and stuff. So I decided to go with the Lord, fill you with his peace. My other choice was Yabba Dabba Do, but I, I figured that wouldn't work too well. Yeah, think about this guy Amos in the first reading. Can you imagine? Amos is a shepherd, simple guy, doing his thing, take care of trees and stuff, not bothering anybody, I guess, making a living, doing what he does. And God comes along and says, I want you to be a prophet. Now, Amos, as we see later on, is telling, you know, I'm not a prophet, and he didn't go to prophet school or anything, he's just a regular guy. But yet God says, go be a prophet. Now, one of the reasons you have to understand that that might disturb him is the prophets have a problem, and it's a big problem. They're stuck with going to people and telling them the truth, just the truth doesn't make them too popular. You know, a lot of prophets found out that being a prophet did not lead to a long-term life experience. They were not treated very well. Doing well now that they did God's work, they're up in heavens, you know, celebrating. But while they were here on earth, you know, that's why they might have questioned, you know, why are you sending me, you know? It's like my brother, I sent him. There are a lot of people called to be prophets. I think Mother Teresa was a prophet. Pope, bishops, priests, God help us, some deacons, religious, you know. There's another band of prophets, and this is, I don't know if you're aware of this, but this is a huge band of prophets. I mean, in the millions. You don't hear much about them as a group, but they're in the millions. And, and they became prophets at the time they were baptized. You know, uh, when they were baptized, they were told it would be priest, prophet, and king. Priest, prophet, and king. And then there was a blessing said, may the Lord open your lips so that your words may proclaim the glory of God. Okay, called to be prophet. If you haven't figured it out by now, that group is you guys. All of us. We're all called to be prophets. You know, we, we have this tendency in our life to go around saying, uh, that's really a terrible thing. They should fix that, you know. I uh, wonder what's going to go on over there. They should do something about that. And God's looking down and says, yo, folks, <laughs> you're they. We make up the they, us, you and me. Think about it. Call to be a prophet. Brown priest is truth. But what you say and what you do, how you live, how you treat others, Prophets, big job. May not make you popular. <laughs> it's a good if you don't like to go to cocktail parties. It'll keep you from being invited to those. You know? no, don't invite him or her. They're going to tell you the truth. We don't want to hear that nonsense. But that's your job. I didn't give it to you. Jesus did. So if you have any complaint about the working conditions or anything like that, you go to the boss, and you tell him because. He's the one that called you in baptism. He's the one in baptism who said, hey, okay, now you're a prophet. He's the one who called you in baptism and said, okay, now use this to spread the word of God. Use your heart to spread the love of God. Use your life to spread the word of God. He's the one that called us to be a prophet. With the they, the they, that infamous they. You know. Now the prophets, they had the, the prophets, the apostles of today's gospel, they had an advantage. They knew Jesus. Now they've been with him, he was teaching them, instructing them, and stuff like that. And, you know, they, they had a good idea, at least generally, that he was special. You know, God, how possible. So when he sends them out, they feel they have authority. You know, I would bet that if Jesus came down here and sort of like, you know, walked down the aisle, this is where everybody gets nervous. If Jesus came down and walked down the aisle, right back, 
And everybody got a little nervous. I said, see Jesus walking down the aisle, you know. And he stops and says, yo, Jerry, how you doing? Good. Listen, go be a prophet. Go out there and proclaim the word of God. See you later. You know? Robert, go with him. If Jesus came down and we knew it was Jesus and he stood here and he told us to do that, I don't think there's anybody in this church who would not get on their feet and run out that door and do what he said. I wouldn't. Uh, running doesn't work, but maybe walk a little quicker. I mean, who can say no to Jesus? <laughs> I'm not that stupid. I'm close, but I'm not that dumb. Yeah, we'd be right out that door, wouldn't we? Think about it. Right out that door. <laughs> yeah, he did tell us to do that, and we're sitting here. But sitting here is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. I'll tell you why. I shouldn't walk down the steps, because then I've got to walk up again. Can I have a quiz? Everybody gets nervous now. I picked up the sandwich bag. I said, oh, God, he brought lunch. We're here forever. You know what these things are? What are these things? I'm deaf. You've got to talk up. <laughs> nope. Charge. Charge. Got my, got my eye watch charger, my iPhone charger, you know. I didn't bring them all because I don't have a suitcase I had to bring. Go to bed at night, plug in the phone. Plug in the watch, or else it's not going to work the next day. Got to be charged. Not charged, nothing happens. Nothing happens. We have to be charged. You and me. But we're lucky. We don't have to carry wires. There's not a guard wire. We don't have a cord long enough. But we have to be charged up to do what Jesus wants us to do. We have to be charged up to become prophets. We have to be charged up to go out that door and do what he calls us to do. And like I said, it's wireless. And here's where we come. We come to this altar because our God said to come here. And this is where we're charged up. Father comes to this altar and he says the words of consecration. Now God comes down among us and he says... I am giving you a job to do. But I'm going to go with you. Apostles went by with each other. And you know about the apostles. Some of them couldn't get out of their own way. And he sent them out on their own. God is smart. He knows that in our world, man, it's tough. You can't go out there alone. So what does he do? He comes down on this altar... He makes himself present to us. We receive him in the Eucharist, and he says, okay, let's go. I'm going to go with you. I'm going to walk with you. You don't need a walking stick or anything. You got me. Not me, me. He, me. And I'm going to walk with you. And we can go out there, and we can make a difference. We can change this world. But you've got to say yes to the call. You said yes, someone said yes for you at baptism if you were an infant. But then confirmation came and you said yes. We have to answer that yes. We have to act out that yes. We have to go with our God. We have to go out those doors and we have to live a different way of life. I don't mean in secret. You know... Back at the time of the apostles, it was the visibility of the people living the life that God called them to that made it work. It had nothing to do with this. See how they love one another. See how they act towards one another. See how they act towards other people. See how their values are. See what their ideals are. See what they listen to. See what they watch. See how they dress. See how they pray. 
Yeah, being a prophet's a tough job. <laughs> That's why he comes with us. Well, I can't do it alone. I'm lucky I can get up and down the stairs. But with him, I can go out and do it. He's what makes it possible. It's nothing, nothing coming out of this. It's all Jesus. And it only happens because we come here. So we've got to come to church. We've got to be here. We be here because we get support from the other wacko <laughs> prophets that are here, praying. We get support from Jesus who makes himself present here on the altar. But it only happens here. Oh, I can pray anywhere. Yeah, you can pray anywhere. <laughs> but not with him physically present. Now, one of the biggest problems about COVID, the biggest complaint, I know it was mine, I couldn't hug my grandchildren. Ticked me off. Everybody here knows me, knows I have one grandchild who are like connected at the hip. I lost a year of her life with me. I keep telling her she has to be 14 again, she says no. Missed him. Missed him being physically present with him. I prayed at home every morning. Hour and a half or so. Wife and I. It was praying. Jesus was present in our prayers. I couldn't touch him. Couldn't touch him. Couldn't place himself in my hand. I couldn't receive the strength they need from the Eucharist, from Jesus' presence, from Jesus coming into me and saying, come on, I'm walking with you now. That happens here. That happens here. Please, God, we've got to come to church to generate this. You know, get the energy we need to live this life. Or else we're not going to make it. But if we do, if we do, if we come to this church and we believe what we say we believe and we act on that, when we walk out that door, we will make a difference. We will change this world. Not we might be able to or maybe. We will change the way this world works because God will make it happen. It's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. I didn't make that up. It's in the book. The whole Old Testament, God making it happen. The New Testament, God making it happen. And Jesus saying, if I am with you, I will make the kingdom of God present on earth. I will make it happen. So guys, go be prophets. And know that God walks with you. God bless.